As many of you know by now, the most progressive members of Congress are all facing competitive primary challenges by well-funded opponents, and we now know that at least one of them is in serious danger of losing. That individual is Cori Bush. The New York Post reports a new poll by GOP firm Remington Research finds Bush losing by 22 points to rival Wesley Bell in the August 6th contest. While the poll was a small sample size of just 401 voters, the results are stark. In the survey conducted last week, 50 percent of those polled said they were in favor of Bell, a former prosecutor, with just 28 percent saying yes to Bush. The margin of error was 4.9 percent. So obviously this is very alarming as somebody who supports Cori Bush, but there are a couple of caveats. As the article mentioned, the sample size was relatively small. And yes, this is a GOP pollster, but I mean, they are fairly reputable, not as reputable according to 538 as pollsters like ABC News and New York Times Siena College, and their transparency score is comparatively low. But I mean, they have produced relatively accurate results, and they're certainly more trustworthy than Rasmussen, which skews heavily towards Republicans. But I mean, this poll is the only gauge that we have at this point of this primary race, and I think we would be foolish to not take it seriously. And as Josh Krajnar of Jewish Insider and Fox News puts it, this is a big red flag for far-left squad lawmakers. Now, as you can see, he's also framing her as being anti-Israel and is implying that her position there is the reason why she's in this predicament currently. Now, I think that him calling her far left is a stretch because even though it's easy to think that's the case when the Overton window in the United States is so far to the right that anyone who's left of center seems like a commie. But I mean, in actuality, even though she's one of the most left wing members of Congress, that doesn't make her an extremist. She's just a social Democrat. There's nothing extreme about any of her policy positions. But I think that there is something to be said here about him saying that She's losing because of Israel. It's not because of her stance, because, I mean, what she's doing in calling for a ceasefire is the position that's supported by a majority of Americans, including a strong majority of Democrats. But the reason why her position has got her in this predicament is because of all the money being spent against her. And I think that he's also correct to point out that this isn't just a red flag for Cori Bush. It's also a red flag for other members of the squad as well, particularly Jamal Bowman and Elon Omar, who are also possibly in danger of losing, although we'll have to wait to see the polls. But I mean, this is really sad to see because she was bold and she chose to come out and do the right thing and call for a ceasefire. But now she is possibly going to be punished for it. Now, a couple of months ago, we learned that APAC is planning to spend more than $100 million to unseat progressives like Cori Bush, who called for a ceasefire and dared to criticize Israel. But before that, we learned this. Wesley Bell announced that he would be abandoning his campaign for the U.S. Senate against Republican Josh Hawley to instead run against fellow Democrat Cori Bush. And it seems like he made the right decision for himself for the fact that he managed to raise a lot of money in comparison to Cori Bush, whose campaign is reportedly in debt with just $20,000 of cash on hand. So run against the Republican with unlimited funds or run against a Democrat who exclusively is raising money through small grassroots donations to remain principled. Hmm, Which one's going to be easier here? So he made the easy choice. Now, this primary challenge is about Israel, but Bell Ironically, after choosing to get in this race because of her position on Israel, is desperately trying to not make this about Israel. But I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, because defending a genocide isn't necessarily the most effective strategy. So instead, what he's trying to do is portray her as a bad representative who I guess is not looking out for the interests of her constituents and is doing bad constituent services. I mean, it's so ridiculous that he would try to make this case, but this isn't what the election and the primary is about. This is about Israel, and he's only running against her because it'll be easier to fundraise against a progressive critical of Israel than it would be to fundraise against a Republican, right? So for him to try to pretend as if Israel isn't the number one issue here shows you how disingenuous he is. And Cory Bush is sounding the alarm about what this race is actually about, despite his attempts to deflect. The New York Times reports, unlike many of the primary contests fueled by various groups, like the American Israel Political Affairs Committee, 
its political affiliate, the United Democracy Project, and the Independent Democratic Majority for Israel. The Bush v. Bell battle in Missouri's 1st District pits progressive against progressive, each with a considerable record to run on that has little to do with Israel. And though driven by money from pro-Israel groups and firm Israel critics, the fight over Missouri's deep blue 1st District is likely to hardly mention the Middle East. Instead, it will be a battle over representation and what that should look like for troubled St. Louis. Quote, I'm being targeted by AIPAC because not only do I believe Palestinians deserve to live freely and peacefully just like Israelis, but because I want to protect our democracy from Republican extremism, Miss Bush said Monday. I want to codify abortion rights. I want to pass meaningful gun violence prevention legislation, and I want to raise taxes on billionaires. All things AIPAC, their GOP donors, and the insurrectionists they endorse oppose. And Cori Bush is exactly correct. This is about Israel, and I think that it would behoove her to at least point out why he's challenging her in the first place. But I mean, it's so infuriating to see Wesley Bell LARP as a progressive during the campaign. And he's only able to do this because he's able to control the narrative since he's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Even though Cori Bush is an incumbent with that incumbent advantage, he has so much money that he could flood the airwaves and get voters to think whatever he wants them to think about this entire race. It's really, it's really frustrating, but unfortunately, this is the way that U.S. politics works. But as much as he wants to downplay his support for genocide now, he already gave away the game in an October 31st interview with Jewish Insider. Quote, he said that the Israel-Hamas war and Bush's comments about it had factored into his decision to challenge her for her House seat. Quote, it contributed to my decision for the surface reasons that those comments were offensive on many levels, but also from a national security level as well, Bell said. But wait for it. Bell declined to say if he had been in conversation with AIPAC or Democratic Majority for Israel, the pro-Israel PACs working to recruit challengers to squad members. But it gets even better. Quote, Bell, who traveled to Israel in 2017 with the American Israel Education Foundation, a nonprofit linked to AIPAC, said he'd seen firsthand the importance of Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. Bush voted against supplemental Iron Dome funding in 2021 after the last war between Israel and Hamas. He is so dishonest, it's almost hilarious. Well, you know, yeah, I have this affiliation between APAC. I'm at least linked to them in a roundabout way, but I'm not going to tell you if uh, they're funding me after I literally decided to get in this race to challenge her because I know that the Israel lobby is going to be spending big to defeat progressives calling for a ceasefire. I mean, this is just, it's so comical how people can run for Congress and be so deceitful about their reasoning, right? I think that if you run for Congress, for opportunistic reasons. Like, I don't expect you to say that, but really we want people to run for Congress for selfless reasons, not selfish reasons, right? We want them to run because they actually care about people, not because, hey, this is gonna be easy because I could just jump in this race and automatically get like hundreds of thousands of dollars because the entire fucking Israel lobby is against this person. It's just, it's so frustrating. Now, the reason why Cory Bush rightfully voted against the funding of Israel's Iron Dome is because they are overseeing a state of apartheid and that bill that she voted against had zero protections for Palestinians, but of of course, he didn't explain that because why would he? But he did use that vote to imply that she supports literal terrorists, which is something that Republicans have also done. Jewish Insider continues, in a press conference announcing his candidacy, Bell said, quote, we cannot give aid and comfort to terrorist organizations. Pressed on that comment by Jewish Insider, Bell noted that Bush had voted against funding for the Iron Dome missile defense system and said that the U.S.'s foes, including Hamas, pay attention to public divisions in the U.S. Quote, they want propaganda to try and create confusion and disinformation, he said. I think it matters a lot. And then obviously how one votes. There are certain things that we cannot politicize, and that's one of them, in my opinion. And as we see, Republicans and Democrats like one of the few issues that we all come together on. Oh, so it's the squad who wants to propagandize the conflict and not his donors. I see. Makes total sense. And I love how he says that he is proud to come together with Republicans for this particular issue. Yeah, the same party who called for Gaza to be turned into a parking lot and to be wiped off the map. That's the party who you're proud to align with on this issue? Really? I mean, why not just join them? It's astonishing to me that he is pretending to be a progressive here. I mean, you can't be progressive and pro-genocide at the same time. But I guess if you have enough money, you can make think people think anything about you. It's just, right? Now, when he was confronted about this morally indefensible position by a non-Zionist Jewish woman, take a look at how he responded. I would like to first speak as a Jewish anti-Zionist 
because I do think it is important that we make it known that not all Jews support the violence, the genocide, the ethnic cleansing of the state of Israel. So it, please just make sure that you do not treat all Jews as a monolith, as if all Jews support the ethno state of Israel, because we certainly do not. Um, that's that is number one. Um, but number two, when you talk about that, you don't want to be divisive. And clearly you are insinuating there, you're implying that you believe Cori Bush is somehow divisive. Um, you think somehow she's too divisive. Um, I mean, I think that a lot of people could have said the exact same thing about you when you ran for your current position. And um, based on that same that same mentality that it is quote unquote divisive to speak up for marginalized, oppressed, colonized people. A lot of people think that that is divisive. And so I think that's how that is gonna be interpreted um, when you say that. As you have chosen this exact moment to run, while Cori Bush has been criticizing Israel's genocide, and you are saying that sometimes we do need to hold police officers account accountable when they use excessive force. But then I'm asked, what I want to ask you is about this contradiction when you say we need to always, always stand with our ally, Israel. You keep saying ally, but you don't say okay. Israel. I think, so I, why, think, I think we got the question now. Why can we not hold them accountable for their very, very excessive force of over 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, half of which are children are killed? So tell me why That's that right. is not the same thing, that we don't ever, ever, ever hold them accountable. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so first and foremost, um, I, I, it, it is a, it's offensive to me that that um, that you would cons you you would you would say that Israel defending itself is genocide. Genocide is the intention is intentionally trying to wipe out um, um, wipe out a people, and mm -hmm. no reasonable person would say that that is that is um, Israel's intention. Israel was attacked. <laughs> um, Israel was attacked by Hamas, and let's let's just since since we're gonna since mm -hmm. we're gonna put this out, and I'm not gonna take up the the entire uh, the, our entire time with this, but I do wanna I do wanna make this point. Israel was attacked by a, a terrorist organization who, in their charter, says that the destruction of Israel is their goal. That they mm -hmm. stated after this attack that they were going to do it again and again. Mm -hmm. They they contact they 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 attacked people at a concert. Those were not military targets. They and and so and, and to call this ethnic cleansing, it, it, it is just wrong. It is misguided. And her statements and your statements are wrong on that. Period. And so Wesley, I, did this begin no, 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 on? No, no, no. I listened to it. everything that you said, Sally, and you. I listened to everything you said, and I did, did not interrupt you. And now it's my turn. No, Sally, we're not going to do this. I listened to your. I listened to your question, and uh -huh. now it's my turn to end. And now it's uh -huh. my turn to speak. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. We, we're talking about accusing folks who we know were victimized by mm -hmm. a, by genocide and ethnic cleansing during the Holocaust and throughout history. And we're going to say that these that this country cannot defend itself against a terrorist organization that literally says they want to destroy Israel. No, I am not going to sit here and play these these word games and, and, and try to reinvent what actually is happening on the ground and what is actually happening historically. Did it start on October 7th, Wesley? Did all of this begin on October 7th? I'm not going to make this a back exactly. and forth with yeah. you. Of course, you're not. of course you're not. Yeah, I think that that exchange speaks for itself. Very, very telling in how he uh, 
just wouldn't answer the question directly. He won't engage honestly with the question because doing so would force him to acknowledge war crimes Israel has committed. And if he did that, his donors wouldn't be too happy. So he's dodging questions like Neo from the Matrix and trying desperately to make this about anything but Israel, even though that's the entire reason why he's in this race in the first place. What a dishonest hack. But you know what? Let's play the game that he wants to play. Let's actually put aside both of their positions on Israel for a moment and look at actual policy positions that both candidates support. When you go to Cori Bush's campaign website, you can see policy priorities. And when you click on one of them, like Medicare for All, for example, you can see thorough details about specific changes that she wants to make to our broken healthcare system. You can go to Housing for All and see a plethora of practical solutions to one of the biggest crises facing the country right now. On the other hand, when you go to Wesley Bell's page, you find um, no policies. Zero. In fact, he doesn't even have a policy page, and he's been in the race for months now. There is a page about him, but there's not a peep about what he wants to do for you if you live in that district. But yet, he wants to make this about constituents and not the candidates. That's hilarious to me. I mean, the choice couldn't be more clear. And if voters in Missouri's first congressional district get tricked into voting for this vacuous shill, that would be incredibly sad for them because they'd be losing a representative who actually gives a damn about them. So I'm going to put the donation link to Cori Bush in the description box. And uh, if you live in this district and you support Cori Bush, do what you can to help her. Text bank, phone bank, canvas, because if she were to lose, that'd be a really sad day for America.